Hi, John Baker here from RotacRepair.ca. Today I have a 582 engine, which as you can see, I have it right down to the crankcase and the crankshaft assembly. Uh, it's in for an inspection. It was passed in time to be inspected and it also, the uh, owner reported, there was some type of a noise in it. Uh, he didn't want to fly it anymore. Now in the inspection so far, I didn't find anything extraordinary with the exception of one thing. On the mag and piston, I did find some striations in the side of the piston in the skirt area, actually from the rings all the way down to the skirt, which looks like some foreign body has been in there. Uh, likely, as far as I can see from experience, some little metal particles, and they generally only come from the bearings. All right, let's lift this off and have a look in. Oh, I see a problem right away. Okay, so there definitely is a problem with the mag end bearings. Not sure how this is going to focus well. Maybe take, try a little light. Eh, maybe not. Right down the center of the crankcase here, this is all filings. One other thing that was a little bit extraordinary is the amount of goo, which is uh, oil, inside of the flywheel. It corresponds to this mess that's on the external part. This is the seal. This is the one bearing. This is the other bearing. Way less space right here. So there's a spacer that you shouldn't even be able to touch that I can move down in here. You see that move? That should be held right in place by the bearing as, it, as the bearing was installed this way. Now, the seal or the O-ring, I should say, that, that uh, helps secure the bearing is broken, which leads me to the belief that it's probably maybe turned or at least pushed forward and of course by the fact that there's an extra space right there where the blade of the screwdriver is is the center of the recess that that ring is supposed to be in so that means that this bearing has moved quite a ways ahead and of course on the other one here is the center right here and this is where the o-ring would be and the seal is sticking out of the end a little bit so it's it's uh trying to push everything out the end of the motor so it's definitely had a mag end bearing failure uh, and um, i'm gonna have to have a good look at the crankshaft to see if it's damaged it probably is and the crankcase i will have to reassemble the crankcase and check the saddle that these bearings fit into is still the proper size uh, the potential that this has turned or uh, we know it's moved forward has it rotated in there it maybe has it maybe isn't I don't know I have to measure and find out if the crankcase is still reusable well look at the movement in here this uh, is the outside of the bearing of course is stationary and look at how much that we're moving up and down so let's lift it out all the way remove the seal and of course what do we see inside the seal lots and lots of debris and i figured i'd be able to lift this one off let me move it around change the angle a bit yeah okay here we go so there is as we can see one fell out but the all the balls are all touching and, and hanging in the bottom and the cage uh, that keeps them separated that a lot of people call plastic uh, which is actually fiberglass uh, reinforced polymer which is an extremely durable item there's what's left of the seat the inside lip is completely gone and that's why the spring had fell off so the there's not much left of the of the lip in here at all so and we can see a lot of particulate and debris in there so that's why the oil was coming out the oil was evident here and the oil um, was evident inside the magneto flywheel however uh, one of the things is from the outside of the engine 
uh, if you looked in, you would only see nice clean parts. So there was no way to tell from the outside uh, on any kind of a visual examination on this here that there was actually an oil leak. And when a Rotax engine leaks oil, there's something wrong with it. The production date on this engine is, uh, as we can see, on right here on the barrel is 09 of 14. So this engine uh, has had a reasonably long life already. Uh, seven years ago it was produced and uh, it should have been apart for an inspection. Uh, at five years it may not have been as bad. The big issue is whether we're going to have a surface that's good here for the seal to run on and if this part, the inner part of the bearing has turned on the crankshaft. Uh, then the next is uh, how much material uh, and debris uh, actually ended up going into the big end of the connecting rod. Well here we are in my crankshaft department and I have as you can see taken the remnants of the bearing that had already uh, been previously removed away. Here is the um, spacer it's destroyed now because it got bent um, taking the bearing off and this is the bearing that was the one that was remaining on there and of course as we can see uh, there's no cage left this right here is the remnants of the cage is just all melted and uh, smushed together so and this is, of course, a, uh, a spacer, and it was the one that I could move before, uh, and it hasn't come off yet. Uh, it's been uh, jingling around in there for a while because we can see how shiny it is. So it's been, you know, bouncing around on the shaft in there for a little bit now. Now the question was, is this crankshaft here going to be in good enough condition to put a new bearing on? Well, I can just, I don't even need to measure it. I can run my finger across it and I see that this radius or the diameter, I should say, uh, where this bearing goes looks pretty much normal. This right here is definitely not. This is looking, uh, it appears to me looking through the lens that this looks like a pretty normal surface visually. And here there's a lot of striations around it and a lot of color on it. Now I've wiped this off already and we can see how discolored it is. This has been extremely hot when it turned on there. So these bearings go on, uh, you heat the bearing uh, to install it and drop it on and then it, it cinches down when it cools off. So it is on there really, really tight. So for it to turn, uh, it pretty much, maybe all, it would have almost stopped the engine um, when the bearings were seizing up. So this, you know, had a performance problem, had a noise, whatever. Um, I only knew about the noise, but I think it probably had a performance issue as well because this would have been trying to stop the engine uh, in all reality. Now, what we can do is we can say, well, like you see on the internet all the time, and they go, oh, these bearings put this, you know, plastic as they call it. They don't even know what it's made out of. Uh, you know, they're no good and they melt and all these other things. Yeah, they do melt, and you can see that this one here is melted. The reason that that actually melted, and it took extreme temperature to make it melt, is because I would bet any money that this had rust in these bearings, because these bearings are super high quality. They don't just fail because they're like bad bearings or something. Uh, they they go for a reason. They, they, uh, they fail for a reason. Uh, reason being um, is probably corrosion. So I'm gonna spin around and I'm gonna have the evidence of any corrosion will be gone off of here pretty much. Um, I'll wash them and I'll see uh, if I do see any corrosion on the edge here. Uh, however, uh, I'm gonna have a look at the PTO bearings and then uh, see if there's any corrosion evident there. I see some corrosion evident there, then it certainly had corrosion on the front bearings as a cause. So let me have a look at that and we'll go from there. The crankshaft is uh, standing on its end in my holding fixture. Take off the seal. Nothing really extraordinary there. Uh, oh, okay. 
So see this color that's around here and let's turn this and you see that right there. If it was some type of a lubricant, I should be able to wipe it off with my finger. See that's wiping off, but there's a little stain there. This is not going away at all. Uh, that's uh, definitely corrosion and all the color around here. Let me rotate it a bit so we can see um, all the color there. This brown stuff is all corrosion. So again, it's a engine with, uh, it's unfortunate. This engine has uh, very low hours on it. Um, and um, what did we say? It has, uh, it's seven years old and I believe it had 60 hours on it. And uh, this is the result of corrosion. Corrosion is the death of these engines. So we need to uh, fog them when we put them away. We need to plug the exhaust. Uh, we need to cover the air filter. If you're gonna store it, make sure you preserve it. All the instructions are in the Rotax uh, information. Manuals that are available online for free at Rotax hyphen owner.com so in summation what does this engine need after seven years and 60 hours of use it needs a new crankshaft because of corrosion that took out the bearings it's not because they're cheap bearings or any of this other stuff it's corrosion it makes them overheat and then it's all but over at that point um, I don't think I had uh, shown you an uh, image of the piston, but the uh, magneto end piston has a bunch of striations in the side, along with some embedded little pieces, which are all metal grindings. Uh, I spoke about it, but I don't think I had a picture of it. Uh, so we'll need a piston. Uh, cylinders are fine, and uh, this engine will live to fly another day. Uh, unfortunately, corrosion, is the death of these engines we just have to make sure that when we store it that it's preserved or fogged whatever way you want to call it and uh, also the uh, openings are plugged all the things in accordance with the rotax uh, manuals uh, that i mentioned you can get for free put them on your phone put them on your tablet whatever they're a great reference to have we should all have them handy so when we need the spec for something or the spark plug gap or something, we can find it easily. Uh, so that's all I have for you on this one. If you liked the video, hopefully you did. Um, again, it's all about preservation. It's really a shame because these parts um, could have been reused had they not been corroded and failed uh, through corrosion. Anyway, so if you like the video, subscribe, hit the little bell thing, and uh, when I put another video up, uh, I'll let you know right away, and you can check it out already. Thanks for watching. John Baker, RotacRepair.ca. Thank you. But don't go just yet. I just spoke to the owner of this engine, and I found out that his aircraft for several years was stored in a hangar. Well, you go, well, the uh, hangar should be pretty good. You know, it has a roof and it has walls and a cement floor. Actually, that's a great starting place for a hangar. However, he said when he used to open the door and go inside, the walls were wet. So it was pretty much uh, in uh, something like a, a greenhouse where you would grow something. Uh, definitely not where you want to store your airplane in a damp hangar. So uh, maybe we could save you some trouble if your hangar is damp and kind of musty. Perhaps you might want to look into some kind of ventilation, uh, leave a window open or something to get the air moving in there because uh, this, uh, this was like storing it in the uh, rainforest, I guess would be a good description. So uh, at any rate, okay, now I'm gone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.